man, what a what a what a tough game to watch. Uh, I I don't even know how to describe what Chiefs versus Titans versus what that was exactly, other than an absolute dog walk. So um, let me go ahead and introduce my guest. First, we have Jay Money. What's up, everybody? And then we have Seth Fred. What's up, everybody? All right, gentlemen. Um, Seth, we'll uh, we'll start with you, brother. What uh, what did you? What was your conclusion of that game? Uh, I like what I see from Nick Bolton. That's it's all I that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the best good thing that I've seen. I, I don't. I can see that Brett. Uh, the two big Brett Beach trades that he's done since we've got him aren't panning out. It's, just, it's not working. So uh, it, with Frank, Frank Clark, Clark and, and who's Brown. the other one? Brown. Oh, Orlando Brown. Yeah, solid it's point. Not working right now. Yeah, it's been you, tough. Uh, what's your takeaway? On the game? Yeah. Uh, we look at this, this game. Yeah, put together. We look like a bunch of young guys trying to figure out how to play football as a team. It's the only thing I could think of. I mean, yeah. it looks terrible. Patrick Mahomes constantly running. Whether he's being chased or not, it seems like every time he just has the slightest pressure on him, he takes off, whether it's – to the better side or not, he's constantly putting pressure on himself, trying to make – we got a bunch of guys trying to be playmakers instead of guys trying to play football as a team, it seems like. And it's hurting us big time right now. To me, it kind of seems like Patrick may still have the Super Bowl in his head because sometimes he's taken off too early. Like there was a couple plays where he slid to the right if he just slid to the left, he would have had time. It's like he's trying to run, run out of the pocket when he doesn't have to. And I think maybe, maybe he's scared. Maybe he doesn't trust his line, which that's bad. That's bad, bad. Yeah, I agree. Well, I, I think that has a lot to do with that because we were talking earlier before the show had started that um, he's tending to, when he does have a clean pocket, to, to break away from that pocket. I think that can be a synopsis of. Uh, a timing in his head, this is kind of what he's used to. Hey, I got to get out at this point right now because I'm uh, about to get killed, which is not completely wrong, man, because Orlando Brown was getting absolutely worked, especially on third down. Yeah. So like that, that timing wasn't off to where like it, it, he kind of had to be that way. So it's just – but then there's other times where it doesn't work in his benefit um, to where he is just, man, it, 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 I don't know. It's kind of, it's tough to say. You don't come from a game like today actually knowing like what the fuck is going on and how do you fix this? I mean, it's like we don't even think about running the ball. He averaged what, like four or five yards of carry on his five rushes today. And it's like we got away from that way too early. Like, before halftime, we're not even running the ball anymore. That's how – I mean, I think that's how you know that we're kind of getting away from the basics of football. Like, why aren't you running the ball? I understand you like, lost Clyde, but you asked me, Daryl, he's a he's a put his shoulder down and run through guys kind of running back, and that's not a bad thing to have whenever you got young guys that are, you know, used to being on a pass – or a rushing offense in the first place. Yeah, I so, think I think I, I, I kind of had a feeling we would have a learning curve, and I was really hoping it wouldn't take you know the offensive line this long to mesh because you know when you go you you lose all your offensive linemen basically, and you switch everything up. It's hard to play with. I mean, you could be the best, you could get some of the best offensive linemen in the league, but you still got to know how to play next to the guy next to him. And with not having that, ooh, our, we got a hard schedule. So you're talking about a a team that's barely had any time to mesh going up against pretty much all playoff teams so far. Uh, right. Our offenses look terrible, too. Yeah. So it, it's there, – there's definitely, like, the idea of them being able to mesh 
but I definitely would have thought, well, offensive line in particular, I thought they would have been a little further along than they I, I anticipated yeah. at this point. Because I didn't anticipate what – I mean, it, it's maybe because we all had such high expectations of Orlando Brown uh, uh, shoring up that left tackle position. Um, and, and another point that you have made in our group text, Seth, is that he is a uh, – Coming from an offense like Baltimore and then um, coming to a heavy offense like the Chiefs, it's a big difference. It's kind of like he might be more of that run grading left or right tackle or left tackle to where uh, having to hold uh, that in or that outside linebacker for uh, that long a time. He's never really been asked to do that because Lamar's just going to get the fuck out the pocket and go. Oh yeah, it's it, it's 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 a there's different techniques you have to use for run and pass blocking, and it's it's obvious you know when you come from a run, both of them left tackle, left guard, Patriots. What do they like to do? Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Then you know dink and dunk. It's what kind of what they've always done. So your left side is all from a run offense, and we're a pass offense. That's all we want to be. That's when they got them. I thought it was evident, oh, we're going to take the ball out of Patrick's hands. We're going to let him run the ball. You know, maybe not make him take these hits. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Like so, at all. Five rushes a game, that's unacceptable. And I, I actually I looked it up uh, during the game because I wanted to see how many times Clyde ran the ball in his career. The most touches he's had is 20. Right. He's only that, had that over touches? 50. Hold on. Is that touches or just rushing attempts? That's just rushing attempts. Um, okay. Si- he, he's only been over 15 rushing attempts six times. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's you're starting running back. You got to You got to give him the ball. Otherwise, everyone's clearly going to be like, we got to worry about the run. They ain't going to run it. They ain't going to run it. Just cover the bad guys passing. That's what they're doing to us. They're covering our guys. They and then you got worry about the run. And then you just got two stars you like to throw it to all the time in Hill and Kelsey. And then basically you go, okay, you guys ain't even got to worry about our run. All you got to worry about is Kelsey and Hill. You guys cover those two guys. You guys are golden. You might get a, a 12-yard pass to Byron Pringle every now and then, but that's it. Yeah. Too yeah, predictable. It, it, yeah. It, well, and not only that, man, it just seems like our – our, our our weapons wasn't what they usually are. Kelsey, he probably he probably ended up with seven eight catches, but it was, it was nothing. And you could uh, tell Kelsey was hobbling a little bit today. Oh so, yeah, well, they, were, they were they were still done. trying to feed him. It, and then they were pulling him out because they were like, okay, we need to feed you, we need you, but we can't get you hurt, so we got to take you out. Yeah, yeah no. It, it, um, even to have him know that he's been hobbled up, one of the things that I was like, I was like, the fact that we even have uh, these guys in right now at this late in the stage, uh, it's something ridiculous. All right, guys, so <coughs> uh, I'm going to bring on our next guest right now, uh, see uh, what he has to say. First time on Talking Dynasty. Uh, Javi, welcome to the show, brother. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Oh, not too bad, man. So, um, let, I'm doing that, pretty too bad after that fucking game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what's your, you know, coming fresh off of that that game? Like, what's your, what's the first oh. thing that's popping in your head? Um, I, do you, are you getting a good audio? Because I'm using a gaming headset. Yeah. Yep. You're good, brother. All right. Um. Oh, shit, man, it's the same thing that's been going on all fucking season. Uh, our offensive line, um, Patrick's making some mistakes. Uh, in our defense, we're not getting enough pressure on the quarterback. Um, our secondary is still not performing well at all. Uh, I think that uh, they just – I Spags really needs to make some adjustments because teams are figuring us it out, figuring us out. Uh, but also that being said, uh, 
Tannehill had a – he was very consistent today. He was very good. So you got to give him his props on that. Also, I, I think we did a lot better than I expected that we would do against uh, Henry. But when it comes to these big, fast receivers, our secondary just can't keep up. Yeah, so we just me, need. It's definitely, it's definitely one of those things. It's like we could never get off the field. We third and four, third and six. We can never get off the field. The one of two things: uh, a, any time they throw it to a running back, it's a first down. It, it doesn't matter the, the the yardage from six to fifteen yards. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is like those quick hit slants to the receivers when it's such a um, uh, third and six. It's just that the, the fact that we never got off the field. I, I remember shit whenever uh, uh, Willie Gay made that interception. I was like, oh shit, something good has finally happened. Like it, it was yeah, that was impressive. That was a that was a good pick. Yeah. Well, and so if you can take some bright spots away from this game. The Chiefs only gave up three points in the second half. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, with that, uh, Tannehill didn't have like he didn't like fucking throw four hundred yards or anything like that. He was just super efficient, and he was protected. We cannot perform like we did when it comes. Like it seems like every week. Almost every play, Mahomes is running for his life. I thought like he's just thought all they over the place. All their points. I thought What's all the points were scored in the first half. Then they did they not have twenty seven? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Scored on. Yeah, they scored. For the the half. Yeah, I think you're right. I yeah, I think we shut them shut them down the second half. Did we? Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, they also didn't look like they tried at all in the second half, though. Yeah, I think a lot of that was we have 27 and nothing. Let's just hold the ball and don't give it back. Milk the clock. Leave them well, no time. Yeah. It was just a bad, bad, bad overall game. Yeah. No, I agree. It's, it's what, well, man, it, the, the, the down part is if this had happened once, like, oh, okay, this has happened twice now. Ball yeah. for last, but. Buffalo dog walked us, and then you have another top team in Tennessee, and they absolutely dog walked us. So, like, and now it's kind of, is this what we are against good teams? Well, I think uh, one thing is that uh, we expected, you know, Mahomes after the first couple of years, like, everybody saw him as, like, the saint, you know, like, he's – future go, but don't get me wrong, he probably will end up being uh, in the Hall of Fame at the end of his career. But whenever he does the thing, some of the things that he's been doing, we all just, everybody shuts down on him. You know? Like, oh shit, Mahomes actually really sucks. No, that's not the case. He's not getting the defensive help and the offensive line help that he needs to be a good quarterback, to be a great quarterback, which I think he's and and he's going to end up being. But I think everybody's getting down on him just because you know he's he's not having a good start of the year. I mean he's still a, he's still a top five seven in yardage. I'm not yeah. sure about touchdowns. You yeah, can't blame him. Whenever they yeah, exactly. held him, all showing out completely. Uh, Hard to blame the defense whenever your MVP quarterback isn't doing anything on offense. I mean, we didn't even get a touchdown today. We he didn't hit two hundred and fifty yeah. yards today. I mean that you was, can't uh, that was awful. That. I think the offense has got to figure some shit out, whether it's trusting their offensive linemen or trusting their receivers, because obviously yeah. we're not clicking. Something is way yeah, off more than our defense. <laughs> Yeah. You're one hundred percent right on that, man. And Trey, uh, I think, uh, Trey, Trey Smith had a very, very bad game today too. He's he's been one of our, one of our, probably I I'm gonna say probably maybe our best linemen so far this year. But today, man, it was hard to tell whether him or Brown was the worst. Right. 
Creed Humphrey. Uh, both of them were getting worked. And Creed had, Creed had a good game, but it's just down. Did, did I hear somebody mention Sorensen? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. And that, please, I, please, please elaborate. Oh, you just said he used to be such a solid tackler, and it just seems like he's not on his game as he has been. I know he wasn't like great Pro Bowl safety, but you know, he was persistent, he was solid for the last couple of years. And it seems like this season he's just not, huh? Are you talking about Sorensen? Yeah. <laughs> Consistent? I mean, consistent. Uh, in the playoffs. In the playoffs. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not consistent. But he, he was a solid tackler. That okay. That's that's it. He was a solid uh, tackler. Right, right, right. So we're gonna disagree with you, man. I've had but, podcasts. I've had podcasts going back for two years now saying Sorensen is a complete liability. I'm cool with him on safe uh, uh, special teams. As far as Gadget player. More than, yeah, more than 50% of the snaps on defense. No way. Keep him in the box. All right, I'm cool with that. Zero coverage for that guy. He can't cover a tight end. Yeah, that's, so yeah, that's what they – he's not – yeah. So I, yeah, maybe I, I, I used the wrong word when I said consistent. But, uh, he, I mean, he used to be a decent tackler, man. He would take – he would take down uh, – he would take down the uh, guy that – Catches the ball a yard in front of him. He chase down the running back uh, in the flat, and it just seems like this year he's totally off his game. Not like I said, I'm not saying like he was great or anything like that. I think what I he's trying like... to say is previously he would make the tackles. This year he's got more missed tackles, and it's very noticeable this year. And something's different this year than normal. All right, so this is where I like I, I completely disagree, man. So I, I think that we have romanticized Sorensen ever since that Houston game, and even last year in the Cleveland game, whenever he had that that fumble. There's these certain moments that I, like kind of has I kind of upped his uh, view of what he actually is as a player. Honestly, I think he's been pissed for from the moment that he's been here. I've been. Yeah. At, like, I, I have not been a fan of Sorensen. I was hoping they would cut him. Hell, it was the year of the Super Bowl. And obviously, I'm glad that worked out because he was an integral part in uh, us getting to the championship game. But his level of play has been below average, I would say, most of his career. So he, what, what you're trying to – basically, people, when they looked up, said, now oh, Sorensen's that guy, he was more – he was in the right place at the right time, but anybody at that position probably would have been in that place. Uh, I want to say anybody would have been in that position because Sorensen did make – like you, you can't take away the plays that he made in the playoffs versus Houston. Um, but uh, sometimes would we even have to be in that position if Sorensen wasn't even on the team? If you can have a younger guy on the team who, A, can actually, actually cover – so I never, <laughs> uh, I'm not against having – I like playing some of the special teams players. That's kind of where it is at for me. So. Uh, You're also but, saying uh, that pretty much we, we, uh, we're putting a pussy on a pedestal. Like yeah. because of the great plays that he made in the playoffs, we're expecting him to be do that all the time. Correct. Correct. Like, you well, are we, correct. Well, I mean, because at, at this point, it's just kind of why else would – why else would – so okay, first of all, Sorensen's never had as much playing time as he has this year when there's a guy like Juan Thornhill who's healthy. I get why Sorensen got as much playing time as he did last year. Thornhill's coming off an injury still, so we're kind of easing him back in. Um, but – the, the fact that he got as much playing time as he had so far, it's like, hey, this dude's our safety. He's getting 100% of the defensive snaps. At no point would anybody be like, okay, this guy, we plug him in, we keep him out there the whole time. So do you think, no do you think I don't, we should push ahead. him back 
push him back another another spot and maybe give Armani Watts some of his snaps? No, no, no. I, I put, no, no, no. I, I don't think Watts, Watts is that guy. I, with how they viewed Sorensen these last couple of weeks, I'm cool with exactly how they viewed him. No, I think no, he, deserves I, to be, he deserves to be on the NFL team, but he oh, doesn't yeah. deserve to get most of the snaps. Now, in college, Armani Watts was very, very good in coverage. And that's the main right. thing that uh, that we're lacking, and that's why they picked him up. He had a lot of interceptions. He covered really well. Um, I think the only reason why they drafted Juan Thornhill was because he was hurt. He was hurt. And, I mean, yeah, you need another guy. But And, two, I think Armani Watts is more of a Tyron Matthew side, so that might be why he's not playing. I, I, there's something on there. There's a reason why they're not playing him. So, because that's the case. This is Watt's third year. He has it. He he would have been on the field more if he was knocking down that door. Uh, special teamers. So it's just I, there. There's a reason. Hell, I think he was kind of one of the safeties that was kind of like, all right, dude, could could have been on the chopping block going into the uh, coming into the season during the preseason, but. Honestly, so I, I know the Chiefs have given up 27 points today uh, defensively, but I, I don't think this is on the Chiefs' defense today. I think this is on the offense particularly because, I mean, what was it? The first half we had 12 snaps, 12 to 30 or something like that. So it's just a, a matter of um, like four first and zero to help the, the defense out. Yeah. I mean, I think our offense is our weakest link at this point, right? I mean, we all have to agree on that because our defense is figuring things out at halftime and making the adjustments that they need to, and our weakness has been our offense not making those adjustments that they need to. Yeah, you're ab- you're absolutely 100% correct. I mean, it's not entirely on uh... – on the defense or on the offense. I mean, there, obviously there's uh, some adjust, adjustments we can make on both sides of the ball, obviously. Uh, but, yeah, I think the offense right now is our weak point. We, can, uh, we can't put points on the board. I mean, we can put points on the board, but we're not doing the uh, – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like it? Shit, I don't know. We're not doing a <laughs> we're not doing a, what we need to do when it comes to a, with the talent that we have. It, today was just embarrassing, especially with uh, all the all the talent we have on offense. It's it was it was it's just terrible for me to sit here on my couch and watch. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of those games, man. Like I, it. it I mean, it, it happens. Like it happens. Day, yeah. Feels like Groundhog's Day, though. The Super Bowl versus good teams. Like it, it feels like that. <laughs> eerie, like we can't fucking do with anything. That's literally what these games have felt like. Every time that we've kind of played these top teams, it's just that we keep um, we keep just running through the same thing over and over. The the offense can't do anything. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Patrick is just kind of trying to pull some shit out of his ass. and Yeah, and he's that. trying to be a hero and all the time. Maybe he's and not you can't be a hero all the time. So one of the what? things that I've kind of been think, thinking about is uh, I know Fortson's hurt. He's an all right blocker. I know Blake Bell's an all right blocker. They thought about doing three tight end sets with Kelsey. Kelsey running routes, having them two maybe stay in, and the full back, full back too. He has decent decent hands. Maybe throw him in there, chip somebody, run a route, chip some, you know, chip the defensive end at the line, and then go out into the flat. Do you got to do something? All right, here's we only question. have two tight ends right now, don't we? Didn't the other uh, yeah, the, didn't the other guy get hurt? hurt. Yeah, no, we, oh, we have four on the roster, so we're down to three. So we have Bell, Noah Gray. Well, you can uh, Bell and you can also center. run oh. your fullback as a tight end as well. Yeah, in tight end position. Yeah, yeah so I don't see. know. 
So when it comes to like weapons, when, here's a, a question that I have for you guys. And I'll start with you, Justin, first, because you're kind of the one who uh, we had this conversation earlier. Uh, what is it going to take for Josh Gordon to get on the field more? I don't know. I almost feel like it's a Le'Veon Bell situation where, you know, Reed's pick, picked him up just so other teams didn't get him. I don't know. I would think that you would have at least seen him in this game whenever we can't find no offensive weapons. We're getting, you know, Byron Prangle and McColl in. I mean, we look – I don't know. I think – it's way past Josh Gordon time. At least try to get him the ball, whether it's a wide receiver screen, see what he brings to the team. Like, there's got to be a reason that you brought him here. And yeah. I don't know. You know how Reed is, though. He likes to save shit for the playoffs. He don't want to expose. He don't want you to have film on what he's capable of if he could put that in his back pocket and save it for later. So I don't know. That's what's going on. But I feel like. We, it's definitely time to pull that trigger because we're losing games and we're losing them bad. With with the uh, Josh Gordon thing, that that interception that was, in my opinion, a real a, a bad placement throw. Was that not him trying to force it to Josh Gordon though? Like he it was. Definitely, yeah. Oh yeah, he was trying to force that. What is that? So, uh, what, so what do you think about uh, Josh Gordon, uh, Seth? The Josh Gordon acquisition? Yeah, just oh. kind of why he hasn't been on the field. I think he's – I I can see when he's on the field and they run the ball that he is probably our best open field blocker. Um, You know, maybe even use that. As a key, maybe just keep him on the field, run the ball to his side if he can break it off. Because a couple weeks ago, that one that one run, decent run by Clyde. That's Josh Gordon's. That was that was big. Josh Gordon. He held his guy. The guy couldn't do anything. The guy looked like he was a tenth grader getting blocked by a grown ass man. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I think. Josh Gordon still has it, but maybe maybe throwing him on some slant routes to get the ball in his hands. The slant route's one of, if not the hardest route to cover in the NFL. Most of the time somebody runs a slant, they're getting it. They're getting it. It's it's almost impossible to cover the slant route unless you have a zone with some beast linebackers. And so, I don't so what see. About you, what about you, Hobby? Why do you think I, the Chiefs have not got Josh Gordon on the field? Why? I honestly agree with uh, what? Oh, what's Justin. his name? The Red Mahomes yeah. jersey. Uh, Justin, about how Andy Reid's trying to pull a trick out of his ass for the end of the season. He want to make the playoffs, but you know we got to make the playoffs first. And. I honestly don't fucking know why he's doing this because I feel like he can be a real threat, especially in uh, in a short slant game, in a quick out game. And I just don't know why he's not getting more snaps or if he, Andy's just trying to read him in or if, I don't know if the enemy has anything to do with it. I, I just can't, I can't figure it out because I thought honestly once we signed him, you know, we all know he probably wasn't going to get a lot of snaps his first one or two games, but I thought he was going to be more included in our passing game. The only other thing, but that he I was right. Remember. He's been doing some. He he's doing some good blocking downfield though. Whenever it's, he's on the field, the only other thing I can think of is maybe he's not getting the playbook. Like maybe the playbook's too depth too deep for him. They're trying to throw too much stuff at him all at once and he's not absorbing it. That's the only other thing I can think of because he has the talent. Maybe yeah, he, yeah, he take some of that off of him. Talent. Maybe just be like, I don't know, dumb it down for him. Be like, just go out there and run a route. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Reid yeah, said he's definitely still got the talent. Yeah, Andy Reid said he picked the playbook yeah. up during the press conference. 
So if and he yeah. picked the Panthers up quickly, then why isn't he playing? There's something else to it, I think. Like the whole yeah. Juan Thornhill thing. Like why he didn't play the first, you know, six games or whatever. Instead, Sorensen was. Now, you know, they realize they ain't got a choice but to play Thornhill instead. So maybe that's what it's going to take for Josh Gordon to get the playing time that he, he – Maybe it's because McColl's finally clicking, Pringle's finally clicking, and he don't want to take away from that. I, I don't know. There's got to be a reason. Reed's usually got reasons for what he does, but no one ever knows him. Reed. <laughs> I, so I kind of so – my thing, my thing with that is is that I, I think it is kind of a little bit of a um, – I, I don't think it's a Josh Gordon thing. It's I think it's a comfort level with Demarcus Robinson, mm-hmm. Pringle – um, and all the other guys who are on the team is just like, okay, we, we know these guys know what they're doing, so I feel comfortable setting out there. Because my biggest thing with the reason, you know, why we don't have Josh Gordon on the field is um, it, it's kind of more on to that, and then they just kind of sprinkle him in there. So, it, and it's, it's like he's getting like less than 10 snaps a game, which I think at this point that is like – you know, we're a few weeks in at this point, you know, 15, 20 snaps a game. I, I don't see why. And he's getting, what, one target a game? Uh, another thing that kind of got to me, at the end of the game, why is all of these other uh, – why is Hill still on the field? Why is Kelsey still on the field? It's fucking blowout. You got Henny uh, throwing him the ball. This would be the perfect time just to say, fuck it, Gordon, get in there. You'll figure it out, and we'll just kind of take it from there. And they didn't do that. That's what makes me think that, you know, Andy Reid might be pulling, you know, trying to put that in his back pocket and saving it for later because Reid keeps talking about how athletic he is, how freakish he is, and all this other stuff, but they're not putting him out there to where we could see. So it's like, what's he doing? Is he trying to save him for later or what? Like, something is going on that we don't know nothing about. Yeah, one of the behind what the are, scenes shit. One of the things that I've always felt like the Chiefs have been doing the last few years and kind of all the time was they're a big move draft team. Now, what I mean by that is if I make a big move to trade for you, I make a big move to draft you, or if I just draft you and there's somebody better on the team than you, I'm going to give you more chances than them because i got to prove that I'm right by drafting you. That's how I've kind of felt about saying. some of the some of the people on our team. They're not better than their backups. They're just paying them so much that they're like, "Well, we got to prove that we were right by paying them. We got to prove that this guy that's making twenty times less than you is not better than you, even if he is." I feel so you. Think that kind of uh, uh, and then. When, whenever they make an investment in play, they're going to roll with that player regardless. Yeah. Uh, like yep. Frank, like Orlando, well, you have to still roll with Orlando Brown regardless. Because, I, I, you know, he has put enough game film on there to show he's a good, solid player. Um, Frank Clark has had really, what, the past two and a half, three seasons. He's had a five or six when he's playing. That's the guy that we were paying for them to have. So it's just kind of um, – other than that, before that and after that, the Super Bowl run, Frank Clark has not been uh, very good, to say the least. So not that, at all. has a lot to do with it because we're literally the worst – team defensive wise as far as getting to the quarterback and it's so it's kind of like all right we know that our four linemen can't get there by themselves uh there has been we did a little more to, today but it's kind of when we've already done that we haven't blitzed very much i i think that we're the type of team that we're gonna have to bring we're going to have to bring it to get to the quarterback because we do not have the defensive line or that monster that's on the defensive line to be able to um, to get to the quarterback. I think that's our biggest problem. That's one of the things that I do like about Daniel Sorensen. I do think he is a very scheme-fit blitzer. Him blitzing off the edge has been one of his best things he's done for us. He's more of a nickelback. Yeah, I, I – 
I think he plays like a linebacker, but he's too small to be a linebacker. Yeah, he tries to, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I definitely think like Sorensen is a better on the, you know, on the block or in the box type of say. Hold it in there. You're right. He does seem to get to the. He'll have points where he does get to the uh, quarterback because he seems to have that work work well for him. That's he definitely comes off the TV screen whenever he is blitzing the quarterback. Um, Right now, when I was watching the game, Love too, it. I thought about this. It also seems like every time we have something schemed up to blitz the quarterback, it seems like the other team has a better play going against us. That uh, uh, you know, their offensive coordinator is uh, out game planning on it. Just for instance, that I don't know if you guys remember that play where Tyron Matthew uh, went for the quarterback, and then you know, boom, they hit a screen out to the wide receiver. And he went for 12 yards. So it seems like every every time we do dial up something, they have an answer for it already. Yeah. It's just I think it's just proof that the, the you know there's no no chemistry going on between our whole team. Yeah, yeah. And a few weeks ago when uh you know, Tyron Matthews, you know, obviously, you know, Dan Storm's getting, getting beat and don't don't throw your hands up in the middle of the game like that more than once. Don't do not do that. You just show everybody in the world that you don't trust him. That And Daniel Sorensen sees that too. So that's going to get in his head. That's going to get in all your all your teammates' head like, what is he doing? He's not – He's that's not team player. They said that that fires I, I, up the other guys, though. So I don't know. He well, said that gets I know about that. As a Chiefs fan, I appreciated that because I felt that in my fucking soul. Like, right? It's like, like, like that's how everybody was feeling. No, no, that little fucking meme that was going around, dude. I felt that. Like, dude, I, I feel you, Tyree, because everybody in Kansas City has their hands up like that right now as we're watching the TV screen. Like, yeah, most we definitely. Keep watching but, fucking. But can, can you I, I can you, you really saying. do that? Like, because. Like, Everybody's different, I think, and I, I, I don't. Shouldn't. You probably, yeah, exactly. You probably shouldn't have done it. I, I see where he's coming from because you're right. Everybody, everybody in Kansas City's like, dude, what? Come on, get this out of here. But for him to do it on the field more than once was kind of like he was throwing, throwing him on the, uh, like throwing him on the bus, and then say, "Hey, I'm about to get in, and drive this motherfucker over." It. Maybe it's a good thing he did that, though, because Sorensen's not playing no more. So who knows? Maybe that's what it takes to get to the coaches and be like, look, coach, you're making the wrong call. You're costing us games. We got to, you know, who knows? Yeah. Juan yeah. Thornhill came out and said, yeah, you know, that's that's Tyran Matthew wearing his, his heart on his shoulder, you know. Yeah, he does that, but he's a captain, and that gets everybody else fired up. So, you know, it's easy to say from our point of views that that's probably not good for the whole chemistry of our defense. But at the same time, who knows, that might light a fire up. On, on, and that's what we need more than anything. I, I, I got a question for you, Javi. I got a question for you. Does Anthony Hitchens get his job back as starting middle linebacker, or is it Nick Bolton from here out? Say that again. I'm not hearing him. I think uh, you yeah, muted, Avi. Yeah, I can't hear you, Mike. My bad, my bad, my bad. No, you're good. Um, didn't Hitchens get hurt last week? Yeah, he got hurt. But just because you get hurt don't mean you can't lose your job. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Um, Honestly, I feel like a linebacking core has been doing decent. Uh, Probably a lot. I think the linebacking core is probably – are number one over our D line and our secondary. It seems like they're making good tackle. Hitchens, he's you know he's solid. Um, I don't think he should lose his starting spot though. He seems like he's a real good tackler. He uh, he can read. He's reading plays good. 
But I do not by any means think that he should lose his starting spot at all. But does he, does he get those tackles because he gives up those plays? It's like a Dan Sorensen thing. Yeah, you make it <laughs> the tackles, but are you giving up those plays to where you, you better get the damn tackle? Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of our players are giving up those plays that we don't need to be giving up, especially when it comes out to the screens, the flat. Uh, we can't. It seems like we have enigma when it comes to speedy big receivers. Like it seems like we can never slow them down. Like they're gonna get their they're gonna get their yards. They're gonna get their at least a touchdown. It seems like we can never slow them down. No matter who what team it is. They I think I, Go ahead. I think Nick Bolton gets the tackles for the losses that Hitchens doesn't give us. I think Willie Gay, obviously today he got us a, a turnover today. Hitchens don't get us that. I don't know. I think they deserve – I mean, I don't think that by any means Hitchens deserves to lose all of his playing time. I think he's a, a fine rotational piece. But uh, for him to be the signal caller and then him lose his starting job, I don't see it happening as much as I would like it to happen. But at the same time, I don't see it happening until Willie Gay or Nick Bolton picks up that signal calling and gets the, the defense better together because I think Hitchens does kind of – like he's kind of the heart of our defense as crappy as that sounds is not <laughs> great at playing, but I just, that's how I feel. I think okay, at this first point. Off, first, hold on, hold on. Seth. First off, you guys are both fucking wrong. Hitchin has not even been even close to solid. How many times has he been? He hasn't been in the backfield all season. As <laughs> as has been in the backfield just today. He's, he's slow. He's always out of place. I don't care if he knows the fucking calls. He's never there to be in place that he needs to be for those fucking calls. He's, he might be the worst middle linebacker in the NFL. So to yeah, but, say that like he's even been okay or solid, that couldn't be further from the fucking truth. He's not I know, good. but look at our defense today. Worst that- defense Look at our defense today. Was this not yeah, the worst? Who was, our the one player, who was the one player on defense who stood out? The guy who replaced Anthony Hitchens. When, we have, I know. when, have, we had, when have we had any linebacker play like that for the past three years? I'm, but to single handedly say Nick Bolt, or to single handedly say that Hitchens was the problem because he missed one game, this is our worst our defense has looked. I don't buy into it yet, but I definitely I, – I am all for Nick Bolton and Willie Gay to play, but I think it's going to take some time for them to be the, the, the head into our defense. I mean, it's hard for Tyran Matthew to run our defense from safety. Like if he's up about to blitz the quarterback or play a linebacker role or guard a tight end, I could see that, but for Ty- – for, it, we got to have our, our captain be our middle linebacker. That's just the heart of our defense. That's just how it always is. And I think that until Willie Gay or Nick Bolton step up, there's no way they're going to pull Hitchens. What do you mean step up? They, dude, have you ever came across an like Anthony Hitchens game? At all, you were like, oh, Hitchens balled out that game. He was the best player on defense that game. Not one. Who was the best player on defense today? Nick Bolton. That's my point. Hitchens has not had that one time. And the this is what his fourth year he's been here, third year that he's been here. There's not been one game that he has had where you're like, he's been the best defensive player that day. Not once. Like so you can't tell me like I did like, oh, somebody somebody has already stepped up and went over the threshold that Hitchens has played the whole time he's fucking been here. Right, but if that's one person playing better compared to the whole defense playing better, you can't make that argument because we need our defense to play get better as a team, not one guy to play better as a single-handed person. We got to have a team play, not def- not one single person playing. I mean, so, I get what you're saying. I like Nick Bolton and Willie Gay, but I don't think there's any way that it's going to happen next week where they bench Hitchens. I think it's going to be at least a couple weeks out. So what, what, where I'm at with this is I don't see any way you should take Nick Bolton out of the game. Oh, um, for sure. If that, means, if that means having Nick Bolton next to Anthony Higgins, 
And about the team thing, if Anthony Hedges is a team player, he's going to do everything he can to teach that young man to take his position. Uh, yeah, that sounds stupid. That sounds stupid on his end. But to be a team player, you got you to gotta do everything you do can do in your power to help your team win. So he needs to help Nick Bolton learn the play so he can take his position. I know it sounds right. stupid at all, but he's got No, to. Matthew can't do that. You're 100% correct. Matthew can't do that. That's why we need Hitchens. No, no, no. You're fucking – we don't need Hitchens. We don't, we don't need Hitchens at all, man. You won't. This is like me with Sorensen two or three years ago. We need Hitchens about as much as we need Sorensen. If Hitchens is on this team next year, it's a goddamn fucking travesty. We're just paying this guy because he's a team player and he's a solid leader. And no, we what we need is fucking ball hawks and players that go get the ball, especially at that middle linebacker position playing four three, dude. That that's the guy who should be popping up off the screen. And not once has Hitchens ever popped up off the screen. So the, the fact – I don't care that he's a fucking play caller. You can let that be Matthew. You can let that be shit, anybody else. I just – you put – you put um, – uh, you, you don't have Hitchens in the middle, man. You have certain packages to bring him in the game. Is he an NFL quality player? Absolutely. He deserves to be on the team. But the idea that he should be – Playing at all over Bowen is the asinine theory. This is kind of I don't that you he doesn't have enough um, <laughs> leverage or a resume for him to be entitled to kind of the, the the argument of what you guys are saying. If he has done something before, I can absolutely kind of see where you guys are coming from. But the fact that he's been a below subpar middle linebacker since the day that we signed him, he's supposed to be the guy who's a run-stopping middle linebacker. We've been getting fucking ran through for the past four years. The and the thing about play calling too, do they not do they not have headsets that they can call throw the plays in? Put put his dumb defensive fucking scheme ass up in the box so he can see everything and send a play call through a fucking headset. Yeah, Spags has been uh and uh, tell him, hey, you know, say, hey, if you see this guy right here, or this guy right here, audible it out to this. Don't or they can do something. They can do something to get Hitchens out of the game. What's that? Don't, don't, what what was you about to say about Spags? I think he he just needs to make some better adjustments. I mean, I know it's not completely on him. It's not completely on the players. It's just a a team thing, man. They got a. It seems like we're giving up the short game more than everything, and letting them get those easy third and sixes, third and semi longs, whatever. Like too easy. But like I said, it's not, it, it absolutely is not one hundred percent on the defense. There's so much it we need to work on on our offense when it comes to. Mahomes, our offensive line, like 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 I said before, uh, we all saw Mahomes as this fucking angel sent from God. above, and, <laughs> and yeah, exactly. And now you know he's what he's got nine interceptions already this year. We had six total last year, if I'm not if that's if I'm not mistaken. So now everybody's all down on Mahomes, but you know, we all know that the dude has crazy talent. Like people are saying people always say, like, oh, it's because he's got Hill and Kelsey and this and that. Like, no, the like the dude's got fucking talent. But is our defense every, good enough? Is our defense good enough to play man though? That's the real question. I don't I don't believe so. Our, so defense, our defensive talent that we have right now, this is going to sound crazy to say, would be better yeah. with Bob Sutton. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Take. Whoa. Take. Would be a lot Ooh. better with Bob Sutton. Oh, oh shit. shit. What you got over there, Paul? What you are doing? <laughs> look at look at how they play the game, and look at how how Bob Sutton schemes his players. 
They're more of a fit for him. I'm sorry. They're more of a fit for Bob Sutton defense than a Spags defense. It's nothing, nothing. I'm not saying Spags, you know, Spags might be a better defensive coordinator than Sutton, but the players we have today fit Sutton's scheme better than Spags. Mm. I think I'm, anybody would fit this defense better than Spags. I mean, look at Spags. He's got playmakers all over the field, and he's not utilizing them. I mean, did you see one play where Matthew would be a better, you know, did Matthew show any plays that he had? I mean, Nick Bolton was literally the only one making plays today. He's the only one with a tackle for a loss. He was the only one that, I mean, Willie Gay had an interception, but other than that, our defense was non-existent. Charvarius Ward, he didn't do anything. I mean, Fenton, I've seen a, a couple decent plays by him, but other than that, our defense was non-existent. Our offense was non-existent. Our whole team was non-existent today. And we can't have that. I mean, they defense had a good second half. Yeah, second half. But Nick Bolton was making all those plays, and it was like Tennessee wasn't even really trying to play at that point. It was like they felt sorry for us more than anything. We don't need that shit. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. It's 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 that. Yeah, I think fun. well, I think a lot of the same half was uh, um, was kind of Tennessee letting their foot off the gas. So it's just that I, I think. Right. I think you got to take that shutout in the second half with a grain of salt. Uh, but it's definitely one of those things where the, the definitely first half, whenever uh, Tennessee was wanting to drive the ball down, they could. I mean, we had them inside the five, and it wasn't shifted into a twelve-yard drive. I think they was, you know, fuck. Tannehill was at ten for 10, 11, 11 for his first attempts, and by then we was down fucking what seventeen, twenty-four, nothing. By the time he had his first incomplete. So it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, man. You can't come away from the game. Where you're like, oh, this is that one thing. Right now, it's a team as a whole. Well, let me ask you this question: Was Tannehill that good, or were we that bad? We were that bad. They did anything think- they wanted to us. When you get five yards of play, no matter what play you do, that's us being that bad. I think Tannehill is a very underrated quarterback. I think he's very, very underrated. Do I think a little bit was us? Absolutely. I think our defense was the worst I've ever seen it in maybe 10 years. Do you maybe guys longer. know who they lost to this year? Who did Tennessee lose What's to that? this year? Who did Tennessee lose Jets. to? The Jets. The Jets. <laughs> the Jets. You know what, dude, At the beginning we, of the season? There's always no... There's always those NFL games where a team loses to a team they're not supposed to. Like that shit happens, man. Like that that, that I get it. I get what you're saying, but that shit happens. So, you scored three um, points against a team that got beat by the Jets. Take that with your grain yeah. of salt. No, nah, I agree, but you can't it's, you can't fucking do it with like oh, apples that's a to trick. apples because they've also they they turned around and they they beat Buffalo. Like, you know what I mean? Well, it's just kind of like it, it's just like that off game, man. Shit happens. Shit, so what's our biggest on our whole team? What's your guy? Who you guys think is our biggest weakness? Where's our biggest weakness on the whole team? Shit, that is a tough one. You just want one player, or do you want no, one spot in our whole scheme? Where's our biggest weakness? I think it's the think same I, thing that was last year. It's our line. Yeah, it's the line on both sides. The line on both sides. No pressure. No, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. They're rushing four guys all day. Four guys, three gays. Four, three guys all game. Getting pressure on us, like, come on, that can't happen. Yeah. Three against no. five, and you letting them touch the quarterback? Really? No pressure. No protection. Especially the protection. The uh, he's like I said earlier, he's just running around. In the entire game, and pretty soon he's just gonna get fucking exhausted. 
he's going to end up getting hurt or just end up being like, be so exhausted. He's going to want to go play baseball. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck this. I'm going to go be a Royal. (laughs) What about, what about you, Justin? What do you think our weakest spot is? Oh man, I don't know. I'm starting to think it's our, our wide receiver core, our offense. Like, I mean, we got Williams, who's been a badass. McKinnon, who who I think looks great every time he gets the ball. And then we got Kelsey and Hill, but we're not, like, really fluctuating with anybody else besides Kelsey and Hill. I think our offensive game plan is our biggest weakness right now. Like, we got a lot of threes. We got a lot of threes and fours. Huh? Everybody is just cracking down on the – Hill Kelsey Mahomes deal, and it's we just need to adjust and make adjustments. All right, so I'm uh, I'm gonna end this off with uh, uh, just kind of a two part question for each one of you. Um, all right, A, what's the Chiefs' uh, record at the end of the season? Uh, and B, do you still think we're a Super Bowl contender? Uh, we'll start. We'll start with Justin first. Oh, of course. No, we're not Super Bowl contenders by any means, unless we can figure something out that we haven't figured out in the first seven weeks. Uh, we're going to be lucky to make the playoffs, and if we do make the playoffs, we're going to face a team like the Tennessee Titans or the Buffalo Bills who, if we don't get our shit together, is going to end up looking like it did today. All right, Javi, same question for you. I honestly don't even remember the question, bro. Uh, so, <laughs> I said, what, what do you think our, our record ends up being, and do you think we're still a Super Bowl contender? Uh, record, record-wise? Shit. I say we still finish at least uh, – Maybe I think hopefully they're gonna turn it around. I'm, I'm I'm biased, obviously. I think they'll uh, turn it around and at least finish uh, a game above five hundred, so like nine and six. Uh, well, well, that'd be what? There's seventeen games this year, so it'd be nine and eight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, game. Uh, at least a game above five hundred. I'm hoping that they'll uh, turn around. But like I said, I'm biased. Obviously, uh, Super Bowl contenders. That uh, I I think that every year. I mean, we could be one and eight, <laughs> and I would still hope that we'd be Super Bowl contenders. So, but out sound advice, probably not. Unless they absolutely pull their heads out of their asses and get their shit together. So. All right, what about you, Beth? All right, so I got us finishing at 10 and 7. Um, wild card spot. No no way we win division. That's Chargers. And I, I, think, I think we maybe even have three people in our division in the playoffs. That is a good possibility. We lose our first game. We lose our first game in the playoffs. So, no, no Super Bowl contender. No right. Super Bowl contender. We lose our first game. And, hell, it might even be against the Raiders. No, that would hurt. Uh, don't do that. That would hurt. <laughs> uh, so, I'll, I'll try to end it off with me. just kind of like saying, uh, so I think we end up – I think we lose two more games. We end up going uh, 11 and 6. Um uh, I think we can win one game in the playoffs, but I think that might be the stretch of it, man. Unless our offensive line really turns it around and Pat can kind of get comfortable back in the pocket, I just don't, I don't see it. I, I I don't. I'd love for it to happen, but uh, just being honest and objective and not kind of looking through rose-colored glasses, I, I definitely think that you know we'll, we'll end up losing two more games, but I think we end up eleven and six. So, all right. On that note, gentlemen, I appreciate you guys joining me. Jay, Hobby, Seth. Till next time, fellas.